This week we play and preview Deck Splash. And in the news, Activision set to take off the world's gamers, but please the world's voyeurs all at the same time. Oh. Valve decides it's finally time to curate the Chuck E. Cheese ball pit that is known as Steam. Please. <laughs> Last of Us Part 2 trailer gets everyone's panties in a bunch. Microaggression! Sony <laughs> <laughs> Sony to publish games on the best-selling console, the Switch. <laughs> <laughs> and more. It's Game Club Reviews with News. Okay, well, I guess we'll just start with the Sony is releasing a Nintendo Switch game. You hear about this? <laughs> Skyrim? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So I'm getting this from Game Rant. I'm going to read a little bit of what they say here. Um, Sony Music Entertainment has just launched a brand new video game label called uh, Unties? Unties? I don't know what that's. Mm, undies? Undies. <laughs> and it's aiming to streamline small independent game studios with the company's large production channels. Today's press release indicates that Unties, whatever, however you pronounce that, will specifically look to discover games with unique features that offer something special in a, in a sea of all too similar titles. But more interestingly is that Sony Music Entertainment's Unties isn't going isn't a PlayStation only platform. In fact, the label just announced its first game for the Nintendo Switch. So doesn't this that sound kind of like they're like they're doing something nice, but they're really just going to go around and gobble up a whole bunch of indie. Yeah. Developers? Well, first yeah. of all, yes, that's absolutely correct. But I I find it funny that we're about to s probably see some kind of like well we probably won't see it, but there's got to be some angry people within Sony, right? Because this isn't Sony PlayStation doing this. This is a different like wing of the Sony company, Ooh, a different division. Yeah, territory fight. Sony Music Entertainment is published like opening a publishing house for small games, and they're supporting like one of their competitors. <laughs> that sounds insane. It sounds like there's gonna be some kind of Sony like meltdown there, like one part of Sony versus of another. Yeah, we're probably just a few years away from Nintendo buying all of Sony. What? <laughs> Do you think so? No, not really, but <laughs> it'd, <Okay>. be <funny. laughs> it'd be so cool if they did that. Just go screw you. They can. I Well, I don't think they could. I don't think they could afford to buy Sony. You don't know. I mean, I think Nintendo could afford to buy the planet. They have something like $16 <laughs> billion dollars, um, in, in actual in cash. Like, cash. Right? Yeah, yeah, not just in assets. But, I mean, $16 billion is more money than I can ever imagine. But I mean, when you're talking about a company that's like international corporate size, like, like Sony, I don't think you're going to quite be able to cover it with 16 billion not in a day when like star wars was bought for four billion yeah that's true so uh also while you look up whether i'm accurate there no no i know you're accurate I, uh, yeah valve is making changes to its steam curator system you hear about this no so i'm gonna get some of this information from <laughs> polygon the ball pit <laughs> yeah the ball pit that is steam um so it's working to significantly imp uh, improve and give additions to Steam's curator system over the next few months. Players will see. So now I'm getting it from Polygon. Players will see those changes manifest on more pages on Steam. What? I might have, must have skipped something. Over the three years since introduction of Steam curators, we've gathered a lot of feedback from all kinds of perspectives. Says Valve. We've heard from players, from curators, from streamers, from game developers, and from all kinds of other tastemakers and content creators. The feedback is clear that the system needs to do a bunch of things better in order to work well for the three primary sets of people it's trying to serve. Players, curators, and game developers. So I was trying to find here, um, with the Curator Connect, so this is the new thing they want to put in. With the Curator Connect, developers can search for appropriate curators and then send a copy of their game directly through Steam, Valve said. We've added a number of tools for finding relevant curators and for identifying the forms of social impact that curators may have. To start with, developers will be able to search the listings of Steam curators, narrowing results by name, OS, language, or tags that the curator indicates they focus on. In the results, developers will be able to see a snapshot of each curator, including follower counts and any linked social media accounts such as YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch which can help verify that the curator is truly who they claim to be. The developer can then build a list of the curators they wish to send their game to, include a message describing their game, and hit send. So what do you think about this, Chris? So they're taking away the anonymity, right? Right. So you can't troll quite the same way. Right. And so the curators and the... There seems to be now there's going to be a closer relationship between developers and curators, which 
I'm not sure how I feel about that. Because yeah. on the one hand, what if you're a curator... Gate 2.0 waiting to happen? Right. On the one hand, if you're a curator, you've you got to be excited for this news because now developers can can, talk, can give you Steam keys directly and... Um, Everyone's going to want to be a curator now. Right, and make deals, obviously, right? It seems like, like all those jerks on YouTube. Right. <laughs> thing about thing about systems like this when there's when it's pretty much a voluntary system you know curators are just people at home playing games and some of them more interested in being avid curators than others but sometimes they don't do a good job of uh saying transparently that they've been paid right Right. that this is uh, some kind of um in other Revenue. news, Valve just hired a bunch of people to work for free. <laughs> That's true as well. <laughs> Valve's really good at doing that. Have you noticed that? It's quite a business model they have. I need to look Come into work that. for us for free. You get exposure. People will know your name. Go fund yourself. <laughs> so, okay, Bioware. <laughs> did you hear about this? Bioware announces um, that the Mass Effect Andromeda is going to get a follow-up. Did you hear about what? this? What? It's a book. we're getting a novel chris we're getting a novel (laughs) is it at least a choose your own adventure novel it explains what happens to the fourth uh whatever those were called we couldn't be bothered to make the game so here's a book about it (laughs) they were called arcs right yeah the fourth arc what happened to it the the salarian one yeah and i had a few of the other races that were missing um what are what were they like the Hanar and all of those. Yeah. All the really boring races nobody cared about. No, no I kind of like those elephant ones. They were funny. Because <laughs> they spoke all strange? Yeah. They, like, would say their emotions. Yeah. Excitedly, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so we're getting a novel, Chris. How awesome is that? <laughs> you can get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a novel. <laughs> well, Activision has... Well, a couple of things happened. So b- about a week or two ago, it was uh, somebody... Noticed that Activision had submitted a patent for selling microtransactions to players, like a technology for it. The tech now this isn't the news, but this leads up to the news. What they had discovered was uh, this patent explained a system that would connect one player to another player who had some kind of like weapon that you could get from a microtransaction, and it would transaction, and it would put both players <laughs> Sorry, in thought. a context where that gun would be would look really good. It would do the job really well. And then so you see this guy tear everything up using this gun. So I want to buy it. Exactly. Okay, they can't <laughs> hear that. Okay. So anyway. Um, I hate autoplay. <laughs> they can just hear us say, you can't hear that. <laughs> they can't hear that. Um, so anyway, this was all, um, you know, people were pretty upset about that. And... Activision had put out a statement saying, like, hey, we're just putting out patents. Don't worry about it. Then another patent has dropped from Activision or has been submitted. Uh, And this one is, uh, I think, directly for Call of Duty World War II. So this one's a bit more on the nose. And it's a system. Basically, uh, what's going to happen is when somebody opens up a loot box in, in the hub area, which is called headquarters, other players will see the loot box actually like happen in front of the player and the player will and it'll open up in front of them in front of everybody and they'll see what item they get from it so it be kind of become like a weird birthday party right right so everybody sees people opening up loot boxes and then that of course will hopefully you know activism doesn't want to admit this but it'll you know you have to imagine the idea here is that it'll become appealing for other people to want to buy their own loot they're boxes. trying to capitalize off of fomo right like, right exactly out? that's Wild. Well, and then there's just that's this, really this smart. weird thing with Battlefront 2's <laughs> microtransactions, right? And loot boxes. What's this? Everyone was mad about the loot boxes in the Battlefront 2 beta. Uh, what was the problem with it? I can't recall. Same now. type of thing. People just hate loot boxes. <laughs> they had loot boxes. That was the problem. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> well, I mean, that was the first thing we noticed when we started Deck Splash, uh, when we started playing it, right? The, loot like, boxes. You just earned two loot, bo- loot boxes. Aw, oh, man, not loot boxes. Everybody's getting in on them. By the way, Chris, you might be happy about this. I might be a little bit happy about it. EA says it will be bringing uh, EA Access subscription programs to other consoles. Don't they already? No, it's always been Xbox. But then... And PC, probably. Yeah. Right, so PlayStation, Switch. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it's not going to be Switch because there's hardly any (laughs) EA games on Switch. So it's got to be PlayStation, right? 
<laughs> so I'm happy about this. Oh, okay. I like EA Access, really. <laughs> Complete disregard for anybody who plays any other system. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So. <laughs> this kind of ties into the next uh, piece of news, which is EA says it's not ready to commit to making more Nintendo Switch games. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now nah, we're cool. Yeah, this... Uh, so I'm going to take from IGN here. Um, following the release of FIFA 18 on Switch, Electronic Arts is not in any rush to bring additional software to Nintendo's platform. EA Chief Financial Officer Blake Jorgensen told the Wall Street Journal, um, "Let me. See, the My publisher plans to wait <laughs> until <laughs> console has uh, been on the market a full year before deciding whether to make more games for it. Which if you wait... A year before deciding to make more games, then you have to wait also for what like a game idea to be developed. FIFA, <laughs> and then three or four FIFA years. 19. Yeah, yeah. Basically, that's just them not committing to making FIFA nineteen until they see how well it does. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not FIFA nineteen for the Switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think we don't really want to port this. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard that FIFA eighteen wasn't like it didn't have all the features on Switch as it did in the other yeah, consoles. <laughs> Like graphic <laughs> gameplay, it didn't have gameplay. It's a text adventure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I wanted to talk about for a minute. Um, just this last week was the so- Sony uh conference at the Paris Games Week for 2017, and they showed off another trailer for The Last of Us Part Two, which then set off a huge debate in uh Christian or Christian in uh in um. I guess that's considerable. Uh, I gotta recover in uh, video game coverage and journalism. Um, and anyway, uh, I wanted to get your sort of uh, opinion on this. People thought um, th- opinions range from what was in that trailer was too brutal for a trailer. Some people think too brutal for a game. Period. Um, others think, hey, you know, if you don't like it, don't watch it. Kind of thing. Uh, I was wanting to get your opinion on like what how did you react to this trailer you guys and w- w- just what are your like do you think it was too much for a trailer what do you think no no really I mean there's man think about doom yeah right, right? Yeah. I mean there's been way worse things I thought it was terrifying <laughs> <laughs> like uh the first time we watched it I got sweaty right <laughs> it just felt like I'd been working out uh no it just looks awesome though it looks totally like yeah. sucks you again we talked like last week it's the perfect kind of trailer right because you don't know anything about what the crap's going on except white people are probably terrible in that game or <laughs> responsible for some type of plague of some sort <laughs> um <laughs> yeah the my feeling about it is that it probably it might have maybe needed like a warning at the beginning you know violent trailer you know when movies are red bands you know it's like an r-rated trailer essentially you get the red band warning instead of the green band warning which says it's good for everybody so, I mean, you can make an argument for that. But other than that small point, uh, I think what we're seeing here is when violence is portrayed truly realistically, it's far more bothersome. You're talking about Doom, right? The thing about Doom is you don't flinch at Doom because the violence of it is way over what is real violence. But it's the other overboard. thing with this was it wasn't a jump scare. You know, like it didn't right. happen quick. You could it tell. It sets up slowly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean. If you don't want to see something like that, then you're in luck because God gave you these two little things called eyelids. <laughs> <laughs> you just close them. <laughs> no, absolutely. I agree with you on that. But I, th- I just think, like, why is it bothering people more than others? Is because usually video game violence is blood splattering everywhere to the point where our brains know that this really isn't what true but violence is. But it's also is. the context. A right. lot of people have more of a problem with violence against women. Mm. and uh, but that's, a, that's 100% the reason for me. But I think that I think that's why The Last of Us always puts women in the most powerful like positions of when when there's violence. It's and, more unsettling, right? Because if you think about Last of, the first Last of Us to. game, even though there's a lot of men doing violent things, and their leaders are always women. I don't know if you, ever, if you yeah, noticed that, yeah, Josh. Yeah. The leader of the Fireflies is a woman. Um, it's always women who are kind of at the top of the violent gangs, and I think I think that's to some degree a Naughty Dog kind of covering their their. Right, Cover, covering themselves there. Yeah, always. a little bit. So when violence happens against Ellie, like, you know, well, 
you know, that's a woman who's at the top of this gang or whatever. I mean, that's not a bad, that's not a bad way to do it though. Yeah. There in terms of setting it up like that, but there is something in me that reacts far more viscerally to seeing that woman get her arm. It's like snapped. a 15, 14 year old. I just, I can't. Oh, and the kid, yeah, the kid part, like that doesn't make it any better, but like <laughs> just the, the snaps sound worse to me. I, yeah. I don't know. That's probably totally sexist. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's sexist. Yeah. Um, okay. Looks so good though, dude. They did such a freaking good job with yeah, that. Yeah, I love seeing that trailer. Oh, man, I'm pumped. I'm I mean, yeah, so it looks pumped good, for that it's game. It's also remember pre-rendered stuff always looks good. Yeah. So. But Last of Us was amazing. Yeah, let's see so. some gameplay. It's gonna be great, Chris. It's gonna be great. Have you, I mean, if you've seen the latest stuff from Unreal, like it's incredible what we can do with rendered graphics now. Yeah, but that's but that stuff requires also computers nobody owns. <laughs> That's why all those game conferences do everything on PCs. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Resogun developers House Marquee has made it public that they are abandoning the genre that has made them famous. So they are big for shmups, shoot 'em ups. Uh, they put out a lot of great shoot 'em up games, really good ones. But uh, in their own words, or well, not in their own words, in summary of their own words, they basically said, "Yeah, but they weren't selling." Like we. We're not, we're here to you know pay our bills, be a company, make money as a company, pay our employees, and nobody's buying shoot 'em ups anymore. And it seems like when the best shoot 'em up company kind of bows out, feels like maybe the genre is on its way out. Outside of like small indie games, of course. Um, Hotline Miami Four. Never got a three. Uh, yeah, yeah, but that'd that's be a, nice. But that's how many we're gonna get now. <laughs> <laughs> but Josh is working on four. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> Josh, you might remember. Um, uh, some of the uh, Resogun was one of the mm-hmm. early PS4 games. There was also uh, Alienation. Um, there is a uh, one that uh, what's the one where you're Stardust? Is it Stardust? Am I getting not Stardust? What's I played like two of these. I think games. everybody just wants to play first person shooters when they're shooting now, right? Right. I played a show at a bar called Stardust. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's pretty sad. <laughs> it's a sad story that I'm not going to talk about. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> Really keeping it moving. <laughs> keeping it moving. Chris, you got some editing work to do. <laughs> oh, somehow my stories got mixed around and we went through them. That's weird. Okay, well, then we'll just cut Dex out that. Splash? What? Deck Splash? Yeah, so let's talk about Deck Splash. This is kind of a tough thing to review because it's early access and we don't really know how done it is. And if well, 100,000 people don't play it, we're not going to see how done it can get. Yeah, that's why I don't think we're going to review it. But we'll do a preview like okay. we did with that other game, yeah. um, whatever it was called, the one that we also didn't review. Uh, <laughs> we're having a great day today, Chris. Oh, so yeah. prepared. Oh, so yeah. in this one. All the preps. Yeah. So we. So all of a sudden, uh, the people behind I Am Bread and Surgeon Simulator, uh, the name is escaping me. Do you remember the name of the company? Yep. The developer? <laughs> we're so on top of it we are on top of this so they've put out a game for free for a week called deck splash and they pretty much threw out the the warning hey of a hundred thousand people don't play this game this week then we're not even gonna con- finish making this game we're just gonna can it um who's the developer bossa Bossa studios is that it developer mostly positive oh wait <laughs> <laughs> so so let me ask, why would you why would you make a threat like that as a company? Because they they said that like just not enough. They said that their games were um, widely discussed and and widely played, but rarely purchased. So like people would like try to get them on like Steam sales and humble bundles, mm. um, and like videos were on YouTube everywhere of these games. But like when it came down to like purchasing full or near full price versions of these games, like people were just not doing it. Isn't that their fault as a company for making games that people are waiting to go on sale to buy? I don't know. I that I was a combination of faults. I'll have to admit that mm-hmm. I never played I Am Bread, but I love Surgeon Simulator. Did I you thought get it was in a humble bundle. Uh, no, I got it on the PlayStation. We've played that together. I think I got it both on Steam and the PlayStation. I might have gotten the Steam one on sale, but I'm pretty sure I paid near full price for at least one copy. But I mean, isn't this like a simple? The market dictates whether or not your game is worthy of full price, or is that kind yeah, of yeah? I mean, that's the other side of the free simple. market, right? Like, is that too simple? Am I oversimplifying yeah, I mean, the discussion? Supply and demand always wins, right? Yeah, supply and, and that's another big part. I of it. demand that bosses sell <laughs> supply me with a game that's <laughs> worth full price. I think we're yeah. also seeing just we're suffering from oversupply. Yeah, like, maybe. this is what we all feared when indies started like coming out a hundred a week like that's too many games yeah. Yeah. um yeah. and but we've seen this now that it's it's easier to make a game it's easier to make a movie it's easier to make a song 
And we're seeing it in all these entertainment industries where the market is just flooded with content. Yeah. And there are a few people who stand out and manage to make a cuphead or something that goes platinum in a week. But for the most part, that like middle class of entertainment maker right. has been completely eroded. Also, I think uh, we're in a, a I, I don't know, I, I might be assuming too much, and this might not be true of Posta Studios, but uh, people who are, g- decide to go into indie, they need to realize that maybe like you're not going to grow in that market, that you're going to put out something small and make small money for it. And that's the market you've decided to jump into. Like, yeah, there's there's like the dream stories of like the people who made Rocket League and the people who recently made Cuphead where their games go like over platinum. But that's not like if you're going to jump into the indie space, be willing to make indie money. Yeah, those are like the people <laughs> who... It seems to go like, hand in hand there. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like playing, you know, it's, I like playing sports and I'm not going to the NBA though, right? Right. I've been. It's overrated. <laughs> I went undrafted again. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. We kind of went off on a tangent there. So this game, uh, a little bit hard to... Well, a lot of people are describing it as uh, Tony Hawk meets Splatoon. So it's So it's Tony Hawk in the sense that um, you're not a skateboarder. That part of kind of... You are me. a skateboarder. You are a skateboard. <laughs> and you're... <laughs> You're in a you're in a area a stage that's kind of reminiscent of a Tony Hawk level, smaller than the Tony Hawk level. You know how stupid this sounds. Yeah, and then, you, <laughs> as a skateboard, you can do tricks all over the map. You know, grinding and flips and spins and all the things that skateboards do. And when you pull off points from those tricks, when you land back on the ground, you create a splash of like paint color. And the more points you built up from the trick, because you linked a bunch of tricks together without stopping, the more of a splash you're going to make. And in, there's a free skate mode where it's just for practice, and then there's sort of an online competitive competitive mode, and it's about covering as much of the area with your paint color uh, as a team against the other team who has a different color. It's like they just made Tech Decks a video game. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> this is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> But don't get me that mean about yeah, it. I mean, I it, 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 it's fine. If they try to put this out for sixty bucks, I'm gonna say it's stupid. But it's why would you expect a hundred thousand people to play that? Well, yeah, you can't crash into other people, so it has a little Rocket League feel ish. I don't think, bro. The if comparison ten, to Rocket League is very good. 10, Others have made people it. People played it. They should be pumped. A <laughs> hundred thousand. With all the stuff that's available on Steam, they want a hundred thousand people to waste their time. Never mind. Okay, keep going, keep going. It's a week. Wow. It, it's a. Brutal. This is nobody's ever gonna give us any free Steam codes again or anything like that. <laughs> By the way, we didn't get free Steam codes for this. Everybody did. It's free for a week, and uh, it's. That's why I'm being harsh. You know, it yeah. can be a little bit fun at times, right? It, it was. F- I liked. Dude, she's got the nicest personality. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, microaggression, <laughs> <laughs> Chris. Chris, I I said this while we were playing it, and it's still true. I don't like being the skateboard. No, <laughs> nobody, nobody wa- does. <laughs> That's the stupidest premise for a game ever. I, I, I everybody wants to be a skateboarder, not a skateboard. <laughs> 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 you have no relation to this inanimate object, right? We also, how does the skateboard flip? Right, it's <laughs> magic. <laughs> magic in the air. No, I've never. Like, it was a little bit fun, but I just feel like at this point, you know, it made me want to go play, like you said, Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk. <laughs> yeah. Or uh, even what was it 1080 or what yeah, was 1080 was so much fun. SSX. Escape. Yeah. Remember that one? Um, yeah, those are fun games. I th- and it had it had a little bit of that flavor, right? It, it definitely the announcer and the music and the colors. It had the speed and the motion of a Tony Hawk game. Yeah, a little bit more forgiving when you're trying to connect it to uh, when you're trying to connect it to grinds. The grinding button. Oh kind yeah, it was really slightly mag- It was slightly magnetic, right? Yeah. It would kind of suck you to the beam or whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> Josh, <laughs> I don't know where Josh is right now. He's just over there having his good time. Let's leave him alone, folks. Um, but I don't know. I I try not to say this, even though I feel it pretty often right now in the current game world. I feel like this is twenty five percent of a game. Just a deep misanthropic. I mean, almost a, almost every walking simulator, I felt like this. People put out these games where it's like all you're doing is walking around a completely empty 
map that might look good the map but there's like not a single npc all you're doing is reading text that comes up when you click on the right item like this is 25 percent of a game it's video games like this that make me want to go outside and live life <laughs> <laughs> the exact opposite of what how a dare game these video control. games <laughs> i'm going to dust off my skateboard and actually go skate yeah i mean th- there was it is kind of fun right like flipping around and spinning around and i could see this like uh, I have friends whose kids are just starting to skateboard. Right. I could see them really enjoying this. Yeah. Uh, so excellent if you're under ten. But I mean, for those of us that grew up already playing Tony Hawk and skate, and yeah, you know, everything else that came along with that era, it, it kind of feels like a step backwards. If if somehow I had snuck into Bosa and talked to some developer into showing me what they were working on, and they showed me this as like a tech demo that they were going to build a lot more game on top of, I would say there's so much promise here. Yeah. Here's a basic idea of yeah. what we want to do. Yeah, because it controls well. Is yeah. this an alpha? It, or not it's a, early access. Well, they say not th- even. It's just like a free week of maybe checking it this is out. just a tech demo though. It could be. I mean, in, that, in which case, it would, it, it's good tech. Like, it's okay, too early enough. though. Yeah, fair enough. It's too early because they're basically saying if people are interested, we'll make this game. If they're not, we're not going to. Right. I don't think it's so much as a threat. It kind of comes off as a threat. <laughs> but I think it's just saying, hey guys, check this out. If enough people like it, we'll go ahead and flush it out. Dude, I right. am so impressed with how you are finding the silver lining in this, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> like, for the person who's like the most rude. Ruthlessly honest individual I've ever met. You are really pulling this thing out of the fire. It deserves to be thrown. Well, maybe I am also the only one in this room who ever really skateboarded. I skated. (laughs) Kind of. I didn't. I was was too fat. (laughs) 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 No, but... uh, so, like I said, if it was if if you know if I was playing something where I knew for a fact that they're gonna add skateboarders to this, that they're gonna really flesh it out, so it's something more like a Tony Hawk what game with multiplayer elements, then I would have um, I'd feel really good about it because I feel like the motion is there and the tricks are there. Um, I and feel the controls like controls are pretty smooth and yeah. It's just that as it is, it's missing so much stuff that I would call essential to a game like this. Yeah, like it feels like on a technical side of things, it's well crafted. Right. But it's like, where's the rest of it? But then again, it is a preview, so. Would you be okay if they just put feet on it? On no, not me. No. I mean, that would make it a little bit more like if you had like feet that kind of went in, like, yeah, like ghosted the off. And, and the legs things. ghosted off. Yeah. So, so you knew well, there was shoes. somebody there. Only shoes. Yeah, yeah, that would work. Like a nice pair of Etnies. I feel like that that's what cell phone <laughs> games do. This isn't even doing what cell phone games do. But you know, if I had this on my computer, like uh as something on my computer that I could just jump into. You'd never play it. I, no, I'd probably jump into it every once in a while. It'd be like a good screensaver. Yeah. A screensaver you could control. Or like yeah. the, the Google homepage, like when you're waiting for your search to load. <laughs> exactly. Wow, I mean, we're so really giving this thing high remarks. No, no it's <laughs> trash. <laughs> Josh. It's not trash because it's not even finished. It's like calling a two by four a crappy house. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what a two by four would be. A two by four <laughs> in and of itself would be a terrible house, and this in and of itself makes a terrible preview to a game. Okay, so I, that, let's, let's, let's let's each give our summing up thoughts. Let me. I'm gonna give mine first. If if there's a lot more to be added to this, like skateboarders, um, more and, ways to screw with your opponents. Yeah, more more ways to engage your opponents. I think that's really important. I I, I talked about like instead of it would be a nice feature that instead of using your paint splash, uh, you could have the option of saving your paint splash as a weapon. So you have the choice between gaining ground in the points versus attacking other people to screw them up. Um, that would give more engagement that I would like. But of course. It's hard to see just skateboards yeah. when you're going so fast. You would have to have bodies to look at again. So if there's a lot more here, I would see so much promise. If we are looking at something that's like, well, this is the game. It's just got to have some more features like kind of pushed into it. Yeah. Then this isn't a game for me. I'm 100% with you, James. Okay. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to see what they develop it into. Microaggression. <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm all about this game. Well, listen, uh, I think we are playing it like on the fourth day it's available. So they said one week. So you got a few couple of days if you're watching this video when it first publishes. Check it out. To, uh, tell us what you think about it. Um, hopefully, uh, Bosa is a bit clearer about what this is, whether it's just like a demo of their tech or if this is like pretty, you know, it's a substantive chunk of a game. So uh, thanks for watching the Game Club. See you later. We at Game Club want to thank you for watching this video. And if you would, please like, 
Subscribe right here, watch a couple extra videos, and keep playing games.